I wanted to share a little bit about my trip to Universal Studios and how I cope with healthy eating while I'm out. And if you follow me, you probably know I have a lot of food intolerances and so that can be really challenging eating out. And so we did this total last minute trip to Universal Studios. We didn't even like, it wasn't even a thought in our minds until about, I don't even think it was a week before, maybe a week before. And then I started researching and we booked it with maybe a week. I can't even remember, but it was not many days. And so often when we, we travel, we get someplace that has a kitchen because then it's so much easier for me to buy, you know, groceries and make some of my own food and not have to worry about eating out all the time. And then like when we would go to Mexico, we would have a place with a kitchen. I would cook my own supper. Sometimes the kids and Rob would eat out and that works out, worked great. And then I could just, I could bring stuff to the pool that I could eat and I didn't have to worry so much about eating out from restaurants. But on this trip, there was no kitchen, no nothing. And it was complicated by my, you know, my Achilles tendon injury. So I have the, you know, I'm not able to walk as far issue. So there was that to take into consideration as well. And so I ended up eating out three times a day for the entire time. And I don't think I've ever done that before. So it was challenging, but it was totally doable. And I found some really good um, tips and some really good restaurants and I wanted to share with you my experiences so that if you're going through a similar thing or you're going um, to Universal you have some ideas for healthy eating um, and you know the good thing about my food intolerance is it pretty much only leaves me with healthy options <laughs> so what I used to do when I first found out about these food intolerances is I would try to just look at the menu and try to pick what I thought looked like it didn't have that stuff in it and then I would get it and it would have something like paprika which is something that really bothers me or it have tomatoes or it would have something in it that wasn't in the description that's something that I do much better if I don't eat I get bad I get stomach aches from some things and I get really bad joint pain from other things so those are things I want to avoid especially on a holiday I don't want to end up feeling terrible and ruin my holiday so um, that's not that's not a good option so then what I tried was um, you know, telling them everything that I was allergic to just from memory. And sometimes I would forget stuff and they would have to go get a pen and paper and write it down and it ended up being a really big deal, right? Which is what I was trying to avoid was making this into a big deal. Um, it's, it does have to be somewhat of a big deal, I guess, because there's nothing on the, there's no options. It's not like this is Robin safe on the menu, right? That'd be great. So then I actually had to take my husband's advice. He recommended that I make a, a like a card to give to servers that had all the information on it. So that's what I did and that's what I've been doing for a while now and it works really well. And so when I was on my trip, I just carried these, like carried a bunch of them and then I could just give them to the waiter. If they don't give them back, it doesn't matter. It's not like it's my only copy. They can, they, the way I just give it to the waiter, say, these are the things that I can't eat. What can you do for me? And I might say like today, I'm kind of, I feel like feeling like fish. Is there an option there? or whatever, because if I don't give them an option, ten, what I tend to end up getting is chicken and lettuce, because most salads have, you know, tomatoes and peppers or something, or, or, or feta cheese or something like that, and dairy tomatoes and peppers are things that I can't have, so what you're kind of left with in the salad is lettuce. So, although lettuce and chicken, you know, once in a while is okay, every meal for three days, mm, no, not ideal or five days, four days, five days, I guess six days if you include, include travel. So, um, so I would give them an option of like, I feel like I'm kind of feeling like steak. Do you have anything that would go with that? You know, so that helps them. Um, and I find it, you get a better, um, option if you give them a little bit of what you're thinking of rather than just leave it open because I don't know, then it just seems to be really boring options that they come up with. So that's what I did at every single restaurant that we went to. And um, I did some research ahead of time about what gluten-free options they have. And I did some research while we were there because we didn't have a lot of time um, uh, well, before we left. And um, so, you know, it was nice not to have to cook for three weeks. It was really nice, or for three weeks, for six days. It was really, really nice. Um, and this made it much easier. So that's my first tip. If you have some foods that you want to avoid or you need to avoid or whatever, you know, even if you're going to a restaurant and you want to, like, say you have diabetes and you need to avoid sugar, you know, maybe just write it on a little card to give to them because then they can take it back to the kitchen and I think they take you more seriously if you, if you do that. And I, I'm going to share with you throughout the week um, some more tips and some 
actual experience that I had in restaurants and what my, what the meals were like and uh, what I would recommend if you're gonna take a trip like this and you know if you do have some food intolerances I know a lot of people who have food intolerances and if they're going away they just don't stick to them and to me that just doesn't make sense because if you have food intolerances you have food intolerances and why would you want to feel crappy when you're on holidays you know so I 100% and proof that you can do it even when it's complicated. You know, I don't have, it's not like, just avoiding gluten would be so easy, but it's gluten, dairy, peppers, tomatoes, eggplant, um, paprika, green beans, asparagus, crab, pinto beans, and navy beans. That's my list of what I have to avoid so that I don't end up with this stuff. So if I can do it with this complicated list, um, you can do it too. And I'm thinking of starting a group just to give some information about food intolerances and what things that you might be experiencing or see and some tips for what I do to avoid those things. Tips like this, like using a, a, a cheat sheet like that to give to people, how I figured out my food intolerances and just, you know, if you're, if you're thinking that that's something that is an issue for you, if you're interested in that kind of thing and me running a group like that, let me know, comment here or message me.